In 2010, the Ostreed herpes virus devastated New Zealand's Pacific oyster industry. While not harmful to humans, it caused up to 90% mortality in wild spat populations and a consequent drop in farmed oyster production of 50 to 60%. For some individual farmers, the losses were significantly greater. Three years on, a collaborative research program at the Cawthron Institute is delivering some promising results. Nick King explains. 2010, the oyster industry started to experience mortalities out on the farm. And, you know, at the time, people didn't quite know what was going on. We'd heard a lot about problems with oyster disease, oyster survival overseas. So in France, they've had issues for a long time. We've always been really lucky in New Zealand with um, our oyster survival rates. Suddenly that changed and you know, I think people were taken a little bit by surprise, didn't quite know what was happening. And it wasn't until later in that year that um, it was identified that the oyster herpes virus, which had been causing, associated with the problems overseas, that that, that was associated with the mortalities here. We had the breeding program going along in one direction this virus has come along and it's really meant that we've had to change direction very quickly. So instead of growth rate and product quality being the main areas for improvement, suddenly it was just survival. When you're losing 90% of your little seed spat, you don't really care about those other things as much. So the focus for us has been on getting that breeding program working on survival and also working with industry, taking our spat supply and looking at how we can kind of reconfigure the farming process so that the spat have the best chance of survival through husbandry. We've had one generation of breeding so far, 2011, which was the year that the virus first appeared here. Um, we produced a generation of, of oyster families. We take a female oyster, a male oyster, we combine the eggs and sperm, we produce a whole lot of brothers and sister oysters, we grow multiple families out in the field. And that first generation, we were really pleased with the results. Um, we had some families where the survival was, you know, zero, nothing survived. Other families where we were getting over half of the oysters surviving. So that showed that there was a lot of potential there for, for breeding to identify the, the, the good oysters that will make it through. This is the algae room that we're in at the moment, and this is what we call our gourmet algae. So shellfish go through this really delicate phase which lasts sort of two to three weeks, and during that time they're swimming, so they're like a little planktonic creature, and they need really good quality food for that. So what we do here is we grow that really good quality food. So they're just two or three species that have been identified as good for aquaculture, good for feeding shellfish larvae, and we grow them in the most kind of productive and efficient system that we can. Really good quality food, you know exactly what you're feeding. This is the oyster lab where we rear the larvae. So each of these little tanks that we have in front of us here contains one family of oysters, and this is an environment that is really controlled because for this sort of first three weeks of their life. They're swimming in these tanks, they're eating the gourmet algae, they need good consistent temperature, good water quality, and also now because of the oyster herpes virus, we have to treat the water with ultraviolet before it comes in. So it's a really managed environment, and if you imagine you know, where oysters normally live in a, in a muddy tidal inlet, you know, it's, it's quite a different environment from that. And it's partly because in the wild, um, these little larvae get released into the water. They're like a plankton. A lot of them get eaten by fish. Hardly any of them make it through. So what we're trying to do here is really stack the odds so that we can take through a lot of, um, a lot of oysters that wouldn't normally you know, get the chance in the environment. So this is really exciting for us because you know, we had some really good results from the 2011 cohort. Now is the chance to take those best performers and test them out again and make sure that those gains, the resilience that we saw in some of those families, make sure that that's heritable and that it's passed on to the offspring. And if it is, then you kind of have you know, your stud families, if you like, that you know are going to pass on resilience to the virus to their offspring.
These are oyster larvae, they're something around two weeks old, they're just approaching the end of that swimming phase, so shortly they'll start looking for a surface to attach to and hit onto something, and that's kind of when they become a spat. So from that stage on, they're much like an adult oyster, but small, and they'll, they'll just grow until they're big enough to harvest. They're hard to look at and say, you know, whether they're healthy or not, what's wrong with them on a particular day, do they need more food? So we're looking at things like the colour of the gut, we can see how much food they've been eating. We can see the, the fat droplets, so we know that they've been eating enough to store some food up. And we're looking at how much they're growing each day, how much the shell grows, and just how active they are um, in the water. Are they swimming? Are they closed up? Not doing anything. This is the oyster nursery. So now they're individual spat or oysters, and they come out here to the nursery so this nursery is owned by Pacific Marine Farms, Aotearoa Fisheries, and they are the people at the moment who are taking the product of the research and getting it up to commercial scale, using it on the farms, and then, you know, within a year or so, it's being exported as a live oyster. These guys are also critically involved in the research. We have our research facility here, the hatchery, where we can rear baby oysters and grow them, but we don't have farms, and so we need people like these companies who can take the oysters, grow them under the conditions that they would normally farm them, so we can see how you know the shellfish perform out in the in the commercial world, um, in the farm environment. This program was made with funding from New Zealand on air.